Hello and greetings everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate the time that you take to watch my videos. First of all, I am sorry that I sound a bit strange. I have a cold. So uh, now that that's out of the way, today we want to make an introduction into a new series, Pantheism in Azatru. Well, what is important about this is that before we can start, we have to define a few things and make some definitions for certain words so that we are all knowing what we are speaking about and that we all are on the same level. First of all, we have to define what theism actually means. Theism basically is just the belief that there is one or more divine beings. There are gods that basically created the universe and everything inside it. Deism is the belief that those gods or those go uh, uh, this god do not interfere with creation. In deism it's important that those makers of the universe are just watching from outside. They do not interfere. In theism, divine beings do interfere with creation and mortal affairs. Now, uh, in Gnosticism, there is basically the belief that there is a material world and a spiritual world, where the material world is not really interfered by divine beings, and that the divine beings do belong to another plane of existence, the spiritual world. So that the material world and the spiritual world are two different things separated from each other. In agnosticism, it's basically the belief that there is no other dimension, no other realm of existence. There's just the material world and everything that does not belong to the material world does not exist. This is different from the next thing we are talking about, atheism. Now, atheism is the belief that there, that there are simply no gods in or divine beings in any way. There is just, let's say, the base we have from science and that there are no divine beings like religions portray them. There may be aliens or something, but no divine godlike creatures. In agnosticism, it's more a bit like, the hell, I have no idea, I have no opinion on this. It, there may be divine beings, I don't know, I don't care. So, that, having said that, we have to discuss the different forms of theism. Now, um, the one most of you may be most familiar with is monotheism. Monotheism just means there is one single divine being, one single divine entity that is basically responsible for everything. Just one. In polytheism, that means that, are, that there are many gods and many divine creatures that share f various fields of responsibility and who interact with each other. Then uh, we have to define what pantheism actually is. Uh, pantheism is a bit of a mix between those two. In pantheism you have a world soul or one divine over spirit, one over soul if you like. One divine source from which everything else stems. That means that there can be multiple gods, there can be many gods, there could also be just one god. It depends on your view. If you think that only this divine source is godlike, then there is only one god in pantheism, because this divine source is the ultimate source of everything else, and everything in existence is linked to this divine source. Now this divine source in pantheism usually is not not conscious, has, doesn't have its own personality, does not have its own agenda or individuality, it just is. Now, um, but there can be all kinds of beings, like there can be gods, there can be various spirits, there can be creatures of nature, there can be humans, animals, plants, and angels, and whatever you like. 
the thing is that all those are connected with each other and that everything has a divine spark, that everything, even the lowest animal, the lowest plant, has a divine spirit inside it that is connected to the source, which means that ultimately everything is divine. Every form of life is divine. In pantheism, this is most important. It has a few things from monotheism, as there's only this one divine source, but it also is polytheism, as it makes basically everything divine. But, and that's the important thing, it doesn't have to mean that. In most cases of pantheism that we know of, it's common that there is the belief that there is this one divine source, and that the gods are just closer to the divine source, that they have more divineness in them than, let's say, humans have. And humans are more divine than, let's say, plants or animals. That's how it usually goes. It also means that there are gods in the pantheon that are more divine than other gods in this pantheon. We will come to this in a later video in detail. Now it's just about the different definition. But basically, polytheism and pantheism can go very, very, very well along with each other. And actually, most polytheistic religions that you know are at their core pantheistic, like Hinduism is actually a pantheistic religion and not a polytheistic religion. Though, of course, as said, polytheism and pantheism intermingle with each other, but so does pantheism and monotheism. It's not that much of a problem. The real problem is that, as with everything else, there are hundreds and thousands of different views and streams that divide this section of pantheism. I will give you an example with monotheism first. In monotheism you have Christianity, Judaism, Islam and quite some others. Let's take Christianity as you may be most familiar with that. In Christianity we have seven major groups of Christianity, which are as just to give a few examples, Catholic or Protestant and many others and so on and so forth. The Catholic in itself spreads in Benedictian, uh, Franconian and many, many more. There are, I think, six or seven thousand different varieties of Catholicism. So you see, monotheism is really just an umbrella term for a wide variety of all different kinds of stuff. And that's also true for pantheism. Pantheism is not a religion in itself, it is just an umbrella term for, the, for a certain type of belief system that there is a divine source. <coughs> so now that it's clear what pantheism should mean, let's talk about panentheism. Well, panentheism is a bit different. Uh, in panentheism it is believed that this divine source is much more than the perceivable universe. In pantheism it is believed that basically nature is this divine being or everything is a part of this divine being and that this divine source is everything in existence. Which basically means everything if you know the Greek mythology, Gaia is a good example. Gaia is everything that is. Everything sprang from Gaia and Gaia is the world. Not the whole universe, but Gaia is the world and everything on the world is Gaia. So, um, in pantheism, that is correct. The divine source, Gaia, is in everything and everything is connected to Gaia. In panentheism, it's that plus something beyond. In panentheism you believe that everything in nature is divine and connected to a divine source, but that this divine thing is actually an individual. It's thinking, it is moving, it has a personality, it has an individuality, it has an agenda, and it is much more than nature. It is much more than everything we could imagine. It is much more than we could ever dream of. It is just a huge thinking being that consists of everything in existence. 
um, to give you a comparison, you your body consists of billions of various cells. Each cell is alive in its own right. It eats, it rests, it produces stuff, it reproduces, it works, it functions, it to the limited degree that a cell can think, it thinks and lives a life on its own. It is an individual. Each cell in your body is an individual. But you, yourself, are the, let's say, combination of all of your cells. Every cell inside your body is a part of you and you perceive yourself as individual, as one entity, as with one personality, even though all your cells are individuals. So basically the thing you call I is a mix of <laughs> an unimaginable number of individuals. So you can think of this panentheistic idea being pretty much the same. This panentheistic entity is everything that is, and everything that is is a part of it. You may be a cell of the skin of this being, while a god may be a finger or a hand or maybe an organ of this creature. <coughs> Good. I hope you are still with me. Um, the next thing we have to differentiate a bit is the point of hedonism and paganism as opposed to, let's say, Christianity. Um, I want to speak about the topic as it is Asatru related. Most Asatru say, I am a heathen or I am pagan. Now, what does that actually mean? Basically, nothing. Because uh, heathenism and paganism come from the very same root. In ancient Rome, there was this cool new religion spreading in the city, which was called Christianity. Now, Christianity was for the cool kids, the inside religion. And those who were afar from the city, you know, the farmers, the rural areas, they didn't have Christianity, they still were polytheists in the Romano-Greco uh, polytheistic religion. And uh, hence it came that those religions that were outside of the city, the redneck religions, were put together under one term, paganism. It basically translates as rural people religion. It translates as redneck religion. Those people who are outsiders, who have no idea what's cool, that's their religion. Heathenism comes from the very same root in English. Heathen, those who live in the heaths, the rural people, and that's their religion. So heathenism and paganism is the same, just paganism is Latin and heathenism is English. And uh, that basically means if you say I am heathen, you say I am a redneck. And that's not really what you want to express. But at least I think you don't want to express that. But that's what you are actually saying. But over the course of history, Heathenism came to mean any non-Christian religion, at least in Christian areas. Uh, for a Christian, heathen is a term for everything not Christian. Uh, Jew is as much a heathen as a Muslim or a Hindu or an Asatua. All of that are heathens to a Christian. If you are a Muslim, then Christians are heathens to you just as much as let's say a Hinduist is uh, a heathen to you. So, having said that, uh, heathenism and paganism and Asatru are very different things. Now, some people have come to the conclusion that heathenism basically means every religion that is polytheistic, which is not true as Heathenism could as well, well be a monotheistic religion. So re you really should stick to the term as a true to describe what you are. You can be a polytheistic as a true are and believe in all the many gods and that there are only those gods and no divine source from which, f through which everything is connected. You can be a pantheistic as a true are who believes that Gods, humans and everything else are connected and ultimately are all divine. Or you can even be a 
kind of monotheistic as a true are, that's patronage. If you, let's say, have a patron, for example Thor, then that is your main deity. It doesn't make you a monotheist because you still believe in the other gods, but in actual practice you will most likely only worship your patron, which comes closer to monotheism. <coughs> now, uh, having said that, it's interesting to note that in Asatru all of those things were historically correct. Everything of that happened and all of that was Asatru. Of course we have to keep in mind that all the words we just defined came up much later. Asatru was never the name for the religion of the ancient Germanic or Viking people, as I said, Norse people, just as pantheism is a word that was created thousands of years after the first pantheists were alive. But this is the topic for the next video. For this video I really hope you just get the point of what the different kinds of terms mean and that you have a good idea about the terminology, what we are actually speaking about. Of course this is no class at university, so I try to keep it short and simple. Reality is always much more complex, but I think it gives you a good idea where to start for the next video. In part 2 we will discuss the history of uh, history of pantheism and we will try to explore it, where it started, how wide it was spread and of course how it belongs to Asatru. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, see you next time.